What makes the company think in those long terms? Objectives. Objectives. Uh, objectives are quite important. Let's put that down. Setting objectives. You know, key role of leadership. And again, I tell you, I've seen hundreds, if not thousands, of objectives from companies. And I would say the majority of them are a waste of time. They're not clear. You know, you, you look at them, one of the first things you end up going into a company is, and you see sort of like 15 objectives, and you say to them, so, which one's important? What's your main one? How do you, how do you, how do you define it? How are you actually making it tangible? So what else? What else makes visionary, the definition of visionary, different from one person to another? Ability, that's, that's an important point. Ability, leadership ability, mental ability, thinking ability. That certainly could be key. Personal traits. <clears throat> Personal traits, right. So let's ask the question. Let's just split it. How many people here think long term in terms of six months, six to 12 months? Hands up. Anyone here think long term is six to 12 months? No? How many people here think long term is 12 months to 3 years? Put it higher. Be confident. Okay, 3, 4. How many 3 years to 5 years? Ah, uh, we'll be more exciting now. How many 5 years and above? Right. Everyone's different. Now, who, who said 12 months to 3 years? Right? You're not wrong. What you're doing is, if you look at it, the, the, the reality is, for a lot of people, even though we might talk about five years, ten years, if you look at their planning, a lot of companies planning, a lot of leadership planning, even when they're talking about five years, it's actually still six to twelve months. You know, they're six to twelve months, and if you put, and, um, and, and I've tried this, if you turn around to them and say, right, put your strategy, put your vision for five years, they'll put a statement. Put your strategy for 10 years, and it's the same statement. 15 years, same statement. I.e., the time period might be longer, but mentally they're still thinking in terms of what's in front of their nose. And that's because the way we've been brought up, it can come down to our cultures. One of the reasons, say for example, in Eastern cultures, we tend to think of longer term in terms of sort of like 10, 20, 30 years, is because of our basic philosophies. Different cultures have different perspectives. What you've, got to what you've got to remember here is that it's not that one is right, one is wrong. It's just that there are different interpretations. What you've got to do is decide whether for you, your interpretation is appropriate and the one that you need as a strategist. What I would suggest is that if you're looking to become management consultants, consultants strategic consultants, visionary, you need to be able to think 10 to 30 years at least. To, in terms of long term. I do an exercise where I do scenario thinking. And in the scenario thinking, I always put the time frame on. And whoever I've done it with, in the majority of cases, I could have put one month, 12 months, 100 years, and it would have been exactly the same scenario. I, people, some people just think in a particular way. Uh, I'm out of wrong, but how do you expect people to think so far ahead into the future? People, people have different priorities. You know, some people just have that ability to look at, if, if you think about it, coming from a Hindu culture, we, we believe in reincarnation. And as, as a result of that, we're constantly, you know, just as a cultural trait, we're constantly sort of like thinking lifetimes ahead. You look at the Japanese, the Japanese, they're thinking, their culture is built around the fact that their children will work for companies, their children's children will work for companies. So they're always looking longer term. The more we go to the West, you know, we're thinking about shorter term. But for those people, you know, you look at shareholders of American companies and whatnot, they want returns within 12 months and whatnot. That's their priorities. But you can't say one's wrong and the other one's right. It's just that people are different. You've got to make sure that you've got the right mixture. And what I'm suggesting is that when you, if you are going as a consultant into an organization, when you're talking about a vision and being visionary, don't try to force something down because this is the reason if you look at a lot of vision statements, and I'm sure you've seen loads of vision statements, 
They're a complete waste of time. You know, you might as well not bother writing, putting them on the paper that they're, you know, that they're on. The very first, when, when I started my first strategy position, it was as strategy manager for Massey Bergson back in the 80s. And on the first day I joined them, I came from the aviation industry, so I had no experience with the agricultural industry. And the MD came up to me and said, I'd like you to write a business statement for us. So I said, no, I've got no experience. He said, that's fine, but I need, you know, you just completed his MBA and he knew I was completely mine. He said, I want you to make a business statement. So I created this business statement and whenever I looked at it, uh, I was embarrassed by it because it was complete rubbish. You know, um, it was more an objective, you know, to increase the market share from X percent to Y percent within a five year period. And what made it, what sort of like drove it over that it wasn't a big waste of time was that when I went into company, uh, we were sat in a meeting and he'd pick on someone and say, all right, quote for me the vision statement. And if you didn't get it, and you see the person shaking, you know, uh, and if you didn't get it right, he was completely on top of you. And I thought, if that's what it takes to make the vision statement work, then it's not working. So, You've got to be, one of the things that you learn from this kind of environment that I want you to take away today is that people are just different. Just, there isn't a, a, a regular model of what the ideal leader is. You know, if you were to ask me, I'd look at someone like Alex Ferguson, we spent 20 years studying him, and um, we were just in the process of putting a book together on Alex Ferguson and his leadership capability. The guy is brilliant, but he's made mistakes. And you know, even now, even after 22 years, people are still criticizing him, you know, from the stands for, for some of the mistakes that he, that he makes. But that's human nature. But what he does is he's prepared to make a mistake. Because once you make a mistake, what do you do? Learn. If you don't make a mistake, you're not learning. You know, if you don't have failures, you measure someone's learning capability through the number of failures they have. You know, one of the key attributes of boxing is one of the key things on fighters is you get knocked down six times, you get up seven. Okay, it's an attitude. And that's something that you can't learn from a textbook. It's something that you have to put, put yourself into environments where you have a degree of discomfort. You know, where there's an excitement about what you're going to do, but also there's a fear. But, you know, we shouldn't be scared of fear. Confrontation. You know, confrontation is another thing. You can have verbal confrontation. The workplace is full of confrontation. The workplace is full of bullying. You know, you, you, you go to any company and there is bullying going on within the work environment. It takes people who have strength of character to overcome it. 